The sons of the Emperor, created by exquisite genetic and psychic engineering, are one of the most powerful entities in the Warhammer universe. But they are not the most powerful. There are quite a few that can best them in a one-on-one -on -one fight, a no holds bar encounter. So here in this video we are going to showcase 7 characters from the Grimdark that can actually defeat them, at least defeat a non-chaos corrupted pre-heresy Primarch, brushing aside the demon Primarchs which have been juiced up. And these characters here will be taken from across the timeline, past and present, and will not include other Primarchs. These entries will show you that it's not just about strength and speed, and the mind matters as well, especially when you're an exceptional psyker. So let's get to it. Let's start with the obvious, number one, the Emperor. The big E is in this list obviously, he is the progenitor and light years above any Primarch in strength, mental prowess or overall endurance. The Emperor of Mankind is often considered the most powerful being in the setting. He is near immortal, he is a psychic entity with immense psychic abilities, incredible knowledge and godlike strength. The Emperor's psychic power is so vast that he is alone responsible for holding back the forces of chaos from overwhelming the material universe. So, the Emperor has bested Lehman Russ in combat in the past, defeating him with one blow. He has also beaten Vulcan as well in the 8 tests of strength and endurance. The Emperor has defeated Mortarion's adoptive father when the latter wasn't able to, and also obliterated Horus even though Lupercal was jacked up by chaos energy from all four ruinous powers. Comparing the Primarchs to the Emperor is like comparing a strong Imperial Guardsman against a Space Marine. While each Primarch possesses unique abilities, traits and strengths taken from the Emperor, making them formidable warriors and strategists specializing in certain areas, it is important to note that the Big E is all of them combined. Number 2. Malkador the Sigilite A perpetual and a right-hand man of the Emperor, Malkador the Sigilite is a very important figure in the Great Crusade and the Horus Heresy. Malkador is described as one of the most powerful psychers in the galaxy, with psychic abilities rivaled only by the Emperor and potentially by Magnus the Red. He possesses extraordinary telepathic and telekinetic powers, allowing him to communicate over vast distances, light years away, and manipulate objects with his mind. Having lived for over 6,700 standard years, Malkador's longevity and accumulated knowledge makes him a wise and experienced figure. He was the only one aside from the Big E and maybe Magnus the Rare that can sit in the Iron Throne for extended periods of time to hold back the forces of chaos. Although he wasn't by any means a fighter, his psychic powers however are beyond comprehension. In one instance, he choked the living hell out of Horus for trying to utter the names of the lost Primarchs. It wasn't until the other Primarchs begged him to stop did he do so. Otherwise, if he took it seriously and wanted to kill Lupercal, then and there, he could have and that shows how powerful the second in command was. Number 3. Cesaric, the Silent King Cesaric stands as the last in the line of Silent Kings, commanding a level of authority that expands across the whole Necron race. His mastery over technology is unparalleled, having orchestrated the grand biotransference process that transformed the Necron tier race into the undying Necrons. With strategic brilliance, he led his people to rebel against the Kitans, who was Targos, imprisoning them, these entities, into shards. The Silent King's enduring presence across millions of Terran years speaks to his immortality and his return from self-imposed exile showcases his mental power and indomitable will because he was there out there for millions of years. Also, his mastery over cosmic forces allows him to manipulate reality and orchestrate complex schemes. So let's put it this way. The Silent King has fought enemies that are magnitudes more powerful than space marines back in the days of the war in heaven, juiced up Eldari and massive crocs who are engineered by the old ones as their ultimate soldiers. A Primarch would have been a foot soldier back in those times and therefore the Silent King at the very least would have a slight struggle and would defeat any one of the Primarchs in combat. But that is for everyone to find out when Rebuta Gilliman reaches the Nexus Pariah and confronts him in person. Number 4. The Beasts or the Crocs well, the Beast refers to a massive orc warlord who led a massive war during the War of the Bees. His size, intellect and ability to organize and lead orcs on a large scale sets him apart as a unique entity. His actions mark a rare instance of orcs achieving a level of cohesion, strategy and technological prowess. Despite his extraordinary capabilities, it is important to note that the Beast was still not a croc. These crocs were the ancient progenitors of the orcs 
created by the Old Ones as a weapon to combat the Necrons during the War in Heaven. These beings were immense and highly advanced, with intellect and technology far surpassing what is seen in the current Orc race. The Crocs were created with a latent psychic gestal that allowed them to wield reality-bending powers when united in battle, and they possess advanced power armor and weaponry. So anyway, during the War in Heaven, Vulcan confronted the main boss, the bees, and fought each other to a standstill, ultimately having to sacrifice his own life in order to kill the bees. So imagine that the bees was equal to Vulcan, and it would have definitely defeated the lesser Primarchs like Lorgar, Alpharis, or maybe even Gilliman, and to take a step further, the Krogs would have pulverized the Primarchs as they were a step above the bees. Number 5. The Void Dragon Also known as Magnadroth, it is considered one of the most powerful and ancient of the remaining Catan, the star gods of the Warhammer 40k setting. Its powers and abilities are depicted in various myths, legends and sources within the lore, making it a formidable and enigmatic entity. It was said that Magladroth was a master of the material realm, capable of creating nearly invincible warriors during the war in heaven. These warriors were said to be able to channel lightning into their enemies showcasing the Magladroth's ability to manipulate and unleash devastating energies even through his followers. Magladroth was also associated with the consumption of stars. It was a Catan, and it could take the form of a cloud of dark light while doing so. It was only defeated by the Necrons using the legendary talismans of Vol, powerful artifacts that were created by the Eldari god of the Forge. But it wasn't killed, but only shattered into various shards. And it was one of these shards that surfaced on Mars as the Void Dragon. In an unknown distant past, the Emperor with great difficulty managed to subdue and imprison the Void Dragon. But if it was ever to break out again in the current setting, with the Emperor interred in the Golden Throne, no Primarch in the current setting would be able to stop it. It is that powerful. Number 6. Constantine Valdor He is the greatest of the Custodes, the penultimate form of a human perfected in every way possible. He is the Emperor's vision of what all humans should be like in the distant future. The first of the 10,000, he was the Chief Custodian and the first Captain General of the Custodies. Constantine Valdor, a formidable combatant known for wielding the immensely powerful Apollonian Spear, had served alongside the Emperor even before the existence of the Primarchs. Way back in the Unification Wars and up to after the Horus Heresy where he disappeared without a trace only whispering the words, UNTIL DEATH. Before disappearing without a trace, yeah. Valdor's combat abilities were the stuff of legends. His reflexes were so extraordinary that it appeared as if he could freeze time itself. Renowned for his exceptional martial prowess, Valdor was rumored to be able and capable of challenging even defeating a Primarch in a one-on-one -on -one battle. In fact, his strength was so impressive that some, including members of the Imperial Court, liken him to a Primarch in all but official title. Valdor's ability didn't only match but surpass Horus in combat, which is a remarkable testament to his unparalleled skill and lethality. But you can say that Horus was a noob at that time. And others might also say that Valdor was just taking it easy. But in the end, Valdor defeated Horus. Number 7. Abaddon So controversy here, the bald Sauron of the Black Legion here is in this list. He holds the title of being the most powerful war master following the footsteps of Horus. However, unlike the demon Primarchs, Abaddon despite being the war master of chaos has a degree of independence. Okay, so he stands taller, stronger and bulkier than the average space marine and his facial features bears a resemblance to those of Horus, including a bald head. Following the Horus heresy, Abaddon has become a potent force within chaos and wields two formidable weapons, the talons of Horus a combination of a storm bolter and lightning claw, and a demon sword called Drachnion. While Abaddon draws upon chaos, he maintains a degree of independence from them. How is he able to defeat a Primarch, you might say? Well, he wouldn't really stand a chance against someone like the Lion or Sanguinius, but since he is like Horus, he could be juiced up with energy from all four chaos gods, and follow in the footsteps of his progenitor, gaining an unholy amount of power that can rival any of the Primarchs if the need arises. Also, he has defeated a clone of Horus created by Fabius Bile, which was physically as powerful as Horus, but lacked the specialness of a Primarch, let's say a warped soul. Anyway, I think that he could best a lower rung 
pre-heresy Lorgar or Alpharius if he was juiced up with a little bit of chaos energy. So that's all the 7 characters which can defeat Primarchs in battle. Anyway, I see that many of you haven't subscribed yet. We won't make videos again if you won't. Anyway, bye. Yeah, I'm just kidding. It would do us a huge favor if you would only smash the red button and also like the video to push us through in the YouTube algorithm. You know, blah blah blah. And while you're at it, bang on the bell icon for notifications. Till the next time. Take care, boys.